Wow. 14th century stone coffin. Welcome back to the channel. This is Bano Bay and uh, this here is the ruins of St. Mary's Church. Now this was once a thriving medieval town. The church is probably uh, 12th century. Now inside we've actually got some uh, medieval funerary monuments. We have a double headed grave slab, also a medieval coffin and a lid in here. We have two mausoleums, one being the prince of the Salties Islands and uh, another one who I'm not sure actually is buried in there, but we're going to take a look and we'll find out together. Right, so this is basically all that's left of the medieval town that was here, the 12th century church. Now, some of these stones, as you can see, are quite new, but there is some older ones as well. This is William Murphy. Looks like 1786 on this one. His son is here as well. It almost looks like it's 1749 on this. So very, very old. So this is the entrance into the church. And we have an altar. Where I presume they say patterns from. And the pulpit. Across here, P.K. Whelan, so possibly Patrick, and actually it possibly says Wellman, actually, Patrick Wellman. This, the writing here is almost gone. It says 1793, age 69. This one has the crucifixion scene on it. See the cross, ladders. Like a, a church there, maybe. I'm actually not sure what that represents. They're almost like dominoes. Um, here lies the body of actually now that I look at it again, the last two there are probably dice. And then we have one, two, three, four, like rectangular shaped. Maybe representing, actually I'm not sure. Interesting, it could be the sands of time maybe there. But uh, James Rose Cedar it looks like, who departed this life, 1790 aged what I believe says 72 also. Looks like Maraid, same surname. She was 70 and it looks like 1789 possibly there. That is actually a beautiful stone. This chest tomb has nice designs on it. They're like chalices. Beneath are deposited the mortal remains of 
Bartholomew, looks like Colfer, who departed this life. Looks like 1842 there. Nice cross on the top of it as well. So I'm not sure you'll, you'll hear it, but we are surrounded by sea. And uh, it's quite rough today. The ruins of the church there. And I think that around the back are mostly the newer stones. This structure, I'm not sure whether it was an old entrance. It does seem to be a big black hole inside it. Definitely looks like it would have been an old entrance, maybe. But it's locked up. Yeah, definitely an old entrance. And it's a pity, really, that it has been blocked up, maybe. I don't know, it was unstable. The stonework is magnificent. Top of the church even gives a medieval feel to it. Now this interesting building is actually a mausoleum. And inside there is Michael. Um, and he was Prince of the Salties Islands. Now, would you believe when he was only 10, and I believe it was 1920, that he made a vow to his mother that one day he would be prince of the Salties Islands. So as I said, he fulfilled his dream and uh, 23 years later, excuse me, 23 years later, um, he bought the Salties Islands now, the coronation on the Salties Islands happened, I think it was 13 years after that. But he had a throne, an obelisk uh, with a, a plaque of his own likeness shipped over to the, um, the island itself. And he even actually had a landing strip made um, and learned to fly. And he would visit the Salty Islands and sit on his throne. Now, this is a huge mausoleum, but up there, you can see the, the coat of arms. It's actually two mermaids, two penguins, it looks like, and possibly two ducks. Now, over in the Salties Islands now, it's actually um, like a preserved bird sanctuary over there, and you'll have puffins and um, different kinds of birds that live on the island itself. So it actually says there on the plaque, Michael, Prince of the Salties, 1911 to 1998. Anne is his wife, Princess of the Salties, 1911 to 1996. Citizens of the world, it says. Now there's numerous um, names here. It says Baby John, son of Prince Michael and Princess Anne Salties. Died the 29th of November 1948. Baby Deborah Ann, granddaughter of the above, 1968. Baby Manfred, grandson of the above, November 1969. Paul Neal, son of the above. He only passed there in 2018, beloved husband of Barbara. So he is in there as well. So 2018 was possibly the last internment there. So quite interesting. Now, I've just been talking to a local and the other mausoleum is actually the same family. This vault was built in 1980 by John Neal and Prince Michael Salties in memory of their father and mother who rest in this cemetery. Man should never forget God. Man should never forget his father and his mother. Man should be kind and helpful to the young and old. Now, he's quite an eccentric man, as you can well understand, but yeah, 
prince of the salties. It's quite amazing. My son was actually over in the salties, would you believe? And the throne is still there. Just on the crosses there, we have Michael and John. What a beautiful structure. Absolutely stunning. I actually love the family crest. So the other mausoleum then that we will visit is actually the same family. Although I do believe and I've just noticed there is a slight change in the surname. Some of them are spelt N-E-I-L-L -L, and others are spelt N-E-A-L-E. -E. Maybe over time the the surname was slightly changed, as we've often seen here before in Ireland. So once again, we're just on the outside of the beautiful medieval St. Mary's Church. We're actually going to go inside and I will show you the 14th century coffin and its lid and uh, some other tombs that are in there that are quite beautiful. So we're surrounded by beautiful countryside. This place is actually very, very busy. So I've had to stop and start a couple of times while people come to not only visit their own families here, but also to take a look at the Prince of the Salties, his amazing mausoleum, and of course to go inside then and see the medieval funerary that's in there. Now this grave has caught my eye and you can see it's the Myler family of Ballycross and Bridgetown which is 20-25 minutes away from here but we've all the, the list of names William, William, Alice, Catherine, Thomas they've all got their dates of death here but John, James and Ellen have not which would make them quite old unless they have been buried somewhere else, which I'm presuming is what has happened here. They haven't been buried in this family plot, but somewhere else, maybe here in the cemetery, but maybe somewhere else altogether. But it's nice that they are remembered and maybe were thought of at the time that William possibly passed away. Very, very interesting. Now, this stone... Can see the date there's 1786 but i'm quite confused it says erected by looks like patrick mccroy then it says over maybe garrett that looks like another name that i'm not able to make out right now who died May 6th, 1786, aged 63. Also Margaret, she died in March 1792, aged 62, with two children. Ah, oh, so two little babies in here. But uh, unless I can see it and edit right now, I can't understand it. Macroy, definitely. Over. Not sure. That looks like Macroy as well. Over. Garrett. Macroy. It's interesting, but I'm a little bit confused by what those words mean. So that brings me to this mausoleum, much smaller than the Prince of the Salties mausoleum. We have some air vents. So you can see the name, Neil, looks like 1928, age 44. See, we're looking at that grave there, the one beside it. Right, so I was reading Ellen Neal um, died April the 20th, 1928, aged 44, and Richard Sonny Neal, 1941, aged just 17. So only two people in here. 
but that beautiful family crest there again as I said the mermaids looks like to me now it doesn't look like penguins may oh do you know what they are they're puffins puffins and puffins are one of the birds you will find out on the salties even today um just the bottom two birds there that is really really interesting from the other from the other mausoleum i think i call them penguins but they're puffins and they, that's the only place that i know of that you can find them locally anyway but it was funny because the gentleman that we had been talking to um earlier he loves uh, the old graveyards and history and we got talking to him there for ages but he came over to point out um a couple of graves for me so that's who was calling me but uh he pointed out this middle one here it's for the french family and it says here lawrence french uh, was a rebel in the 1798 rebellion but this one is also extremely interesting. It says, here lieth the body of Walter French, his grandfather who departed his life. And zoom in, see if you can see it. I can't get into the grave. He departed this life uh, January 1701, aged 140. Now, I did show that grave before, but we were just uh, thinking, like, what a mistake to make on a headstone. And maybe I'll be able to walk up between two graves here just to give you a look to prove mistakes were made and they weren't fixed because I'm presuming it would have cost an awful lot to engrave a stone as it does now but to make that mistake and leave it there he was born January 1701 140 40 years old when he died right so I'm going to bring it inside the church and as you can see, we have some relatively new stones, but some extremely old stones in here as well. I want you to take a look at this. Boy, have we come on since the 14th century, because in the 14th century, that there is what you were buried in, a stone casket or coffin. You have room just there for the head, the body, and it tapers down to the feet. That there is the lid of the coffin. So you can see that has been repaired. But what I find really, really interesting, if I can get a closer shot of it, is that huge hole in the centre. That was to let all the bodily fluids flow out of this coffin um disgusting yes morbid yes but just look at that now you would have to be quite small which they were back then to fit in a coffin like this can you imagine the weight of it trying to bury someone but uh thankfully her coffins today are far nicer and not near as heavy. So this is 14th century. Also in here, I believe this is 14th century as well. If I can just walk along the curbing of this grave. Look at that. Lovely designs on it as well. Beautiful actually. Now, it does say that it's to commemorate uh, Joanne, or Joanne's Colfer and Anan Luskin. So I'm not sure of any other history on it, but extremely interesting all the same, right down to the, to the bottom there. Now, these coffins often give me a kind of a vibe of like a, what you'd find a vampire would be um, buried in, but very, very interesting. So as I said, we're inside... The 12th century church here. We actually also have a, um, a medieval, looks like a, a tomb top here as well. This one just has like that long dagger kind of a design on it. 
hard to pick up there on the camera. But this is um, two tomb slabs. And I can't read it from there. And I don't want to be climbing all over it. it looks like Anna Maria Carl is the name on that. Then we have this kind of a structure. This tomb slab has completely worn away. And then we have a few more in there. But once again, I can't read it. But I do wonder, was it kind of a, a crypt or a vault at some stage? Maybe. I'm not 100% sure. The beautiful window. Some of it has been bricked up. But what I find most interesting in here is not only the stonework that still stands, but this big wood lentil, I suppose you would call it. That's original. I mean, that is quite amazing. And you can see like, just there, like a stake of timber to secure it. Pretty amazing. 12th century there. Wow. Let's have a look at the other side of it. Look at the designs on it. It looks like it's been eating away. All the windows here seem to be bricked up, unfortunately. This is a very old stone here. Kind of know by just looking at it. It's like the slate stone, it splits. Let's see if we can read. I'm interested to know. They have a cross here. A Brendan Cullen. April 2008, age 76. So obviously there must be a relation. And it does look like Cullen wrote there. Colleen, John. Here lies the body of John. Looks like C-O-L-L-I-N, Colin. So did the name change from Colin to Cullen? Don Cormac. There's the date, 1803, age 70, something years of age. A bit more writing just down there. So obviously, a relation then that went in after, and not that awful long ago. Beautiful Celtic cross there. That is all in Irish, but I do see Cullen wrote on both of those beautiful stones. So obviously that plot there is owned by the Cullen family. It's the stone there, it's a beautiful stone. It's like a feather and the cross on top. And it's a name Granddaughter in law of Walter Brown, born nineteen forty four in Finland. So I don't want to say the name wrong. It looks like Aisha Ramili O'Connor, loving wife and mother. Just there. Wow. The door there, it's so low down. They do say back in the day people were much shorter. But I'm short. I'm five foot, almost five foot five. And that, <laughs> I mean, look at that. So low. Kind of comes to my shoulder. 
So I wonder, did the church kind of over time sink or were people really short back then? Beautiful church. Right, so guys, I'm going to leave it there from the magnificent medieval church, St. Mary's Church here in Banno. And uh, I'm right beside the stone coffin, 14th century stone coffin. They say it's good luck to lie down in these, but um, I'm not going to chance it. Uh, I don't think I'd fit anyway, to be honest with you. But for now, guys, take care. God bless. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. But for now, take care. God bless. And I'll talk to you all again soon.